Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Before we start, here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below. In this video, we're going to differentiate between two terms which tend to be kind of confusing in the topic of the immune system, and those are antigens and immunogens. And once we understand the difference between antigens and immunogens, then we'll move in and talk about the lymphocyte formation and selection process, which is going to involve positive selection and negative selection. But really, before we get to this, we need to have an understanding of what antigens are and what immunogens are. So first of all, what is an antigen? Well, let's look at sort of a textbook definition here. An antigen is a substance, molecule, that binds with lymphocytes and induces the production of more lymphocytes. So basically, it's a substance that induces an immune response. Okay? I want to qualify that statement by saying that antigens can potentially induce an immune response. They don't always. Many antigens do induce an immune response, but there are some that not only shouldn't, but they won't induce an immune response. So let's look at two examples here to understand what an antigen is. Okay, so this cell right here, this is a healthy cell that belongs to you personally. I don't mean it's a, ma a mammalian cell. I don't mean it's a human cell. This is your specific cell. Okay, this might be your liver cell, let's say. Okay, it doesn't belong to another person. It doesn't belong to your friend, your family member. This is your cell, and let's assume it's healthy. Every one of your cells, with few exceptions, display what's called an antigen on their surface, so basically on their plasma membrane. This self-antigen is a signal to your immune system that this cell is your own. Okay, now if in theory, if you have your own cell, then your immune system should leave it alone. It shouldn't attack your own cell, right? And in a normal situation, that's what happens. This self-antigen is a marker that says to your immune system, leave me alone. I'm on your side. I'm on your team. Okay? I'm not an invader. I am a healthy cell that belongs to me. Okay? So this immune cell right here, it's not going to be able to bind to that self-antigen. Okay? It's not going to be able to bind to this marker that says, leave me alone, I'm on your team. And so this cell will just leave it alone. And so if this were a natural killer cell, the natural killer cell would kind of come over here, but then it would just be tolerant of your healthy self cell. And so that's what permits your self cells, which are really just your own cells, from being attacked. Okay? This self antigen is a marker that says, do not mess with me because why would you want to? We're on the same team. So it pretty much just prevents friendly fire, so to speak. And so as you can see here, this natural killer cell will not attack this cell. And so your immune system should exhibit what we call tolerance to your own healthy self cells. And that only is the case when you have a normal self antigen. Now let's look at the situation where we have an abnormal cell. So all cells display an antigen on their surface. Okay? Now an abnormal cell could be one of two things. It could either be a self cell, meaning one of your own cells that's been infected with a virus. It could be a foreign cell, such as in the case of a, a bad transplant. So if you get a liver transplant or something like that. Or I don't have it mentioned here, it could be a cancer cell. One of your own cells that's become cancerous. In any of those cases, that cell, regardless of whether it's foreign or self, it's going to be displaying what appears to your immune system as a foreign antigen. Okay? Now, if it's a foreign cell in the first place, of course it's going to be a foreign antigen. Let's say you were to get, now this would be a terrible idea, but let's say your best friend was to give you a kidney. Well, that really wouldn't work, because your best friend is going to have a very different antigen than your own. You have your own self-antigen, your friend has their own antigen. And so their antigen is going to be perceived by your immune system as foreign. And so this cell will no longer be tolerant of that foreign cell. It will attack that foreign cell and, under, and cause it to undergo apoptosis, in which it'll die. 
Now, if we have a cell that's been infected with a virus, we'd like to get rid of that cell, okay? And so that virally infected cell is gonna display an abnormal self antigen. It's still your own self cell, so we call it a self antigen, but it's an abnormal self antigen because the cell is virally infected. And so this natural killer cell or whatever cell it happens to be is gonna come over and recognize that this is not the normal self antigen. And so it's going to attack the cell and destroy it. And pretty much the same thing's true in the case of a cancerous cell. Again, a cancerous cell may display an abnormal self antigen the natural killer cell or whatever immune cell it is, is gonna come over, see that this is not a normal self antigen and kill the cell, okay? So having a normal self antigen is important because it tells your immune system that that cell is healthy and a part of you and that that cell should, that immune cell that is, should leave your own cell alone and be tolerant. Whereas if you have an abnormal self antigen or a foreign antigen, which would just come from a foreign cell, then your immune system, these immune cells, are going to recognize that this is not the normal self antigen and kill the cell by in inducing it to undergo apoptosis. Okay? Both of these right here, these antigens, they're both antigens. But remember I said an antigen potentially induces an immune response. This one down here that's abnormal or foreign, of course it induces an immune response. But the self antigen does not, okay? But they're still both antigens, okay? If you were to take this cell and put it into someone else, this healthy cell, it would be perceived by foreign by the other person. So this can still induce an immune response if you put it in another person. But in a situation where that antigen does elicit an immune response, that antigen is considered an immunogen, or it's immunogenic. So in your own body, this healthy cell would not be an immunogen, but it's still an antigen, okay? It's a non-immunogen, because it does not induce an immune response in you. However, an abnormal cell by any means, infected, cancerous, or foreign, that would be an immunogen, and that would elicit an immune response. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are both lymphocytes. They are both made in the red bone marrow. However, B lymphocytes stay in the red bone marrow during their maturation. And so as a result, they're called B lymphocytes, B for bone. In contrast, T lymphocytes are made in the red bone marrow. However, during their maturation, they actually migrate to the thymus and complete their maturation there. And so the T and T lymphocytes is for thymus. Now, both B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes undergo their own positive and negative selection. So I'm just going to talk about this very generally, but it's going to be basically the same thing for both of them. Except for in the case of T lymphocytes, we're just talking about a receptor. B lymphocytes, we're talking about an antibody or an immunoglobulin. So positive selection. In positive selection, what we're basically doing is we're testing to see which of these lymphocytes will actually bind to abnormal or foreign antigen. Okay, um, remember this is the color for the abnormal antigen from the previous slide. So out of these four lymphocytes, for example, these two on the left are actually binding to abnormal self antigen or foreign antigen, which we want because we'd want to induce an immune response against these type of cells, all right, that have these abnormal antigens. The ones that don't bind it are useless because you can't induce an immune response with these cells if they're not binding to that abnormal antigen. So we're going to get rid of these, and they're going to undergo apoptosis. However, the two immune cells right here, these lymphocytes that actually did bind with and interact with the abnormal antigen, they're going to advance into what's called negative selection. So whereas in positive selection, what we were basically doing is just seeing if these lymphocytes bound to the abnormal antigen, now we want to make sure that these lymphocytes also don't bind to our own self cells. Okay. And so if we had one of these lymphocytes that also bound to a normal self antigen, we need to destroy that cell, otherwise we'd be carrying on an autoimmune response. We'd be attacking our own self cells. And so in this one on the left, this cell is actually binding to our normal self antigen. We don't want that. I don't care if this one lymphocyte actually picked up and bound with the abnormal antigen. The fact that it's also binding with the normal self antigen is just as bad, if not worse. So let's get rid of this one. This one is going to undergo apoptosis. And then we're going to keep this one because this cell right here, first of all, it bound to the abnormal self antigen. 
so we keep it. And it did not bind uh, to the self-antigen. So it did not, so we keep it. And so this lymphocyte is going to be kept and replicated for uh, future use. Okay, And uh, this process of positive and negative selection is going to occur for both uh, B cells and T cells. And really, once these B cells and T cells are mature, they're then going to migrate to secondary lymphoid tissues, such as the lymph nodes, the spleen, tonsils, and so on and so forth. We talked about those in a previous video, so go back and watch that. But hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you understand the difference between antigens and immunogens and what antigens are, and also understand a little bit about how lymphocytes are selected uh, to be able to bind to foreign antigens, because we also don't want them to be able to bind to our normal self antigens, so positive and negative selection respectively. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.